For USCFootball.com, I'm Jack Smith here with Chris Trevino for instant analysis from USC's evening practice on mock game week. Chris, how's it going? It's going pretty good. It was a hot one today. I practiced a lot of a lot of sweating out there, a lot of water being uh, sucked down by the players, and it was a shells day, so they had some uh, some extra equipment on. But it was a good practice overall. A lot of energy from the defensive side, and obviously they're not playing a game this week. But it was a mock game week, so just a lot more preparation for for a little more preparation for Rice in the coming days. I think the main thing to note is not actual practice, but it's post-practice. We got to speak to Caleb Williams, who's first time we've talked to him in about a week, and Eric Gentry making his media debut after practice. Let's start with Caleb. What did you gain from his talk? Yeah, I think, I can't even remember the last time we talked to Caleb. It felt like it's been months, but obviously he's QB1, you know, the leader of this uh, offense and this team, so people want to talk with him. And I think the biggest thing is he kind of uh, hit on the message that the team and offensive players have hit on, that the timing is so much better with this offense coming from spring to now. He said that they feel a lot more closer together, which is a big thing with this team chemistry and what they're kind of trying to build. And he says, you know, we've run thousands and thousands of plays together, so it feels like we're really clicking really tight. And, you know, there's there's room for some, some crazy activity and, and moving things around but for the most part they feel like they're really clicking with this uh, this offense right now. And we also got to hear from a couple players about Caleb, Andrew Voorhees and Brendan Rice talking about his competitive edge as well as you know how he is a leader on the football field. Offense had a slightly down day today which could be seen either way offense down day or defense good day but Caleb was out there hyping up everyone on the offense making sure they got their energy up. What are your thoughts about Caleb as a leader and a competitor? Yeah I mean from day one you know guys have raved about his leadership you know guy transfer new transferring in new guy right on the field gets right in the huddle and breaks it down that's the kind of leader that Caleb Williams is doesn't matter if he's been here for five months or five minutes he's going to take up that leadership role and that's what we kind of saw today or what the players said they saw today I noted that defense had a lot of energy a lot of juice to start the day so I'm not surprised that they had a little bit of an advantage here against the offense but Caleb is doing what he's going to do on the game days on sidelines when the offense is not as crisp he's going to be in that huddle he's going to be on the sideline he's telling his guys keep that energy up we're going to break through got to have that same mentality when you're out there so it was nice to see him kind of hyping them up even if it was just practice because you got to practice like you're going to play. I think one of the most interesting things Caleb said as well is that coming into his second year in this offense, which he's only one of a couple players on this team going into the second year under Lincoln Riley, he said that Coach Riley is giving him a lot more credit and, and giving him an ability to be more of a leader and has a lot more trust in him. Did you, what did you think of that part of his postgame presser? Absolutely. I mean, Caleb Williams was a talented freshman player, made a lot of plays, did a lot of great things, still had a lot of room to grow, obviously, as a freshman. This is a guy who's being touted as a legit Heisman contender, you know, top three up there. You know, Bryce Young's, uh, tri, uh, tri, CJ Stroud at Ohio State. So he's in that conversation, and what you want to see him do to kind of compete for that is take his game to the next level. People are wanting to see what's going to happen with this sophomore season. Second year in this Lincoln Riley offense, as I mentioned, he's been given the reins a little bit more, that versatility to have a little more creativity in this offense. You want to see him calling his own plays giving him the reins a little more, letting him take control. And I think that's the biggest thing we want to see out of him and USC fans want to see is him take that next step with his game and controlling this offense because it is his offense. Yeah, and the, the offense has been great all through camp. One thing Caleb did note is one of the players that's one of the most polarizing over the last couple of weeks, Eric Gentry, is giving him fits on defense. Yeah, I mean, Eric Gentry, everyone has been buzzing about him through the last, I feel like the last week of camp and early here in mock game, mock game week. But, you know, he mentioned kind of that he's just giving them so much trouble on offense. He's so long, can can reach over. You know, he kind of mentioned, it's, it's funny because he mentioned the interception that he had uh, Eric Gentry picked off on. He said he just lost him out there, which is, which is a funny thing to say because he's six foot six and he, he it's hard to lose a six foot six linebacker, but just didn't see him, kind of went up there, grabbed it out of nowhere, easy pick. So... Even even Caleb Williams is 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 uh, a little bit excited about him because he even said uh, I'm glad he's on my team. So practice is the only time he's going to be really going against Eric Gentry, and he's glad he's going to be facing off against opponents and not him uh, uh, weekly. And we know Eric has those flash plays in him. He's such a lanky long linebacker that can make those plays. His defensive linebackers coach mentioned that he is not only making those splashy plays but he's really learning how to make that next play the routine play right after making one of the big flashy plays did you hear that as well yeah I mean I was in that scrum with you and that's kind of one of those things that Brian Odom really hits on is you know you can make those big plays you can make the big sack the big pick or whatever but if you want to stay out there and be a consistent starter you have to make the little plays you have to make those little plays that add up to things and you know drives this game is a football this game is football is a game of inches. It's about the small things, not necessarily the big things. So that's what they want to kind of see out of Eric Gentry moving forward. And Eric Gentry, you know, kind of talked about in his media debut, he kind of talked about how they came here for him to be a dynamic and impactful player. That's one of the things that drew him to this defense and allows him to play in that middle. And that's where he wanted to play. So 
he, we know he can make plays. He's been making plays all fall camp, but just need to be consistent, and then we're, I think we're going to see him on that first team this season. Any more news or notes before we get to injuries that you want to touch on? Yeah, I, I, just with Gentry and his, his, his media debut, kind of, I asked him about uh, Brian Odom's comments about having a chip on his shoulder. That's kind of the way he plays. I could tell that that, that question kind of meant something because to him because he's like you know I feel like I've been disrespected I feel like this defense has been disrespected and I don't want that to continue I want to go out there and play to the level that I know I can you know he was a freshman All-American last year everyone and he mentioned how he's just kind of playing off instinct so right now this season he wants to kind of go out there and prove that he can be a complete linebacker you know six foot six linebacker you don't see that every day so I think he wants to prove a lot of people wrong and he kind of mentioned how he came to USC because he feel like he, he, he wanted a fresh start uh, you know leaving Arizona State you know with all all those things that were going on over there. He wanted a fresh start. He wanted to go to, quote, a place with history to make history. So that's kind of where he's at right now with USC, trying to, you know, turn this program around, get it back to where it was. So I, I think that was kind of the main thing I took away from from his his talking with the media. And I think another thing is that, you know, Alex Grinch and Brian Odom both spoke, and we obviously asked about the tackling because they were not happy with it. Going back to the that, that first scrimmage week uh, for, for fall camp, and, you know, I kind of asked Brian Odom, how do you feel about the second week? You know, that Saturday final scrimmage. He said it was a lot better, but still a lot of things to go. And Grinch was complimentary, too. He's like, I feel like we did better, um, but still a work in progress. And I got it out of Brian. I was like, has there been progress? He was like, yes, there's progress, but still a lot of room to grow. And we've been able to see a lot more about the last two practices, the two that we've seen this week. We've gotten scout team offense versus first team defense, and the players are swarming around the ball. So there's definitely intent to tackle. Let's get to injuries. Anything new on Rehab Island? Yeah, I mean, it's kind of been the same, you know, list of players, you know, Kyle Ford, Chris Thompson Jr., uh, Damani Jackson, he's still out. Uh, so a whole slew of guys, Jason Rodriguez, he's still out. Uh, so kind of the, the normal there. The, the big one would be Sol Solomon. Tulia Pupu is a huge fan favorite. I'm sure some people watching this were just jumping out of the seat. I posted a video of him coming out. He came out in full pads, which we – or not full pads, but in pads and a helmet, which we haven't seen since maybe the first week of fall camp. So – that's great progress. He did not do a full practice. You know, he was doing kind of rehab, but still, that's a huge improvement to see him out there in those pads, you know, kind of getting acclimated, getting back out there. So I think that's a great sign for the, his, his potential to maybe play next week uh, in the Rice game or at least suit up and be available. Uh, Michael Jackson the third the wide receiver, he seems like he's getting close. He once again did team warm-ups. You know, he hasn't progressed to the full pads, but I feel like he's getting there. And Bryson Shaw, safety, still out. He's still doing kind of those... Uh, those light drills, you know, light footwork, like catching drills with Benny Wiley on the side. So I feel like he's progressing, but I'm not sure where he's going to be, but he was dressed out in pads. And I think the other big thing is Romello Height. Obviously, he was scheduled to speak with us today, but he did not make his, uh, he did not make a media appearance, even though he was on the docket. Not sure what was that about, but he did have the yellow non-contact jersey once again. Uh, but he seemed like he was okay, you know, watching Scout. He was going up in there. You know, they're not full hitting, but... They're, they're thudding a little bit. So he was out there, you know, going up against the edge, uh, offensive tackles and doing things like that. So he seemed to be in a, in a good spot. He is wearing that brace, so it might be something with the shoulder. We don't have an official designation yet. Maybe that's something we'll get from Lincoln Riley tomorrow. Um, and the other thing is Corey Foreman. Corey Foreman did practice. He did do a full, you know, he's in, dressed out in pads and helmets. So that's another good step for him, kind of ramping him up for that rice opener. So I think those are kind of the notable notes in terms of injuries. I think big news along that defensive line, especially when we see the yellow uniform, it's normally on the offensive side, quarterbacks just don't get touched, but being able to see the defense a little bit more in these last couple practices, seeing Solo actually out there on the line makes a huge difference. Same with Corey Foreman as well. Any more last notes before we wrap it up? Nope. I think this is just, you know, end of mock game week coming to a close and Caleb Williams kind of talked about how, you know, you're, you're, you're off training camp and you're preparing, it feels like you're preparing for a game because it is a mock game week and they're, they're preparing against not having that letdown because they're doing all this work but they're not playing a game on Saturday. So men mentally you have to kind of block that out and not have that mental letdown and they're kind of taking it week by week. They're, they're, they're not looking ahead to, you know, a Stanford. They're not overlooking Rice. They're focused on Rice. They're focused every week like they have an opponent and that's kind of the mentality they're taking. So we're going to close out mock game week. And then, Jack, we're ready for uh, the official first game week of, uh, of college football in USC season. So next time we see us, we'll be talking about the official game week for USC football. I know Trojan fans have to be so excited about that. The start of the Lincoln-Riley era. For Chris Trevino, I'm Jack Smith. This has been Instant Analysis. Check out uscfootball.com for more.